All right, so good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining me here at Chiaw. My name is Ashley, and we're gonna be learning about invertebrates today. Now, first of all, can you tell me in your own words what an invertebrate is? No, we've talk, we, I, we talked about it before. What I say? We're learning about animals that don't have what? Bones. No. Back. Bones in your back. <laughs> yeah. Great job. So invertebrates are animals that are lacking a backbone. So if an invertebrate is lacking a backbone, then that means that vertebrates, like, um, like us, uh, they have backbones. Because if you take your hand and you feel down your back, you're gonna feel those little bones in your back and that makes up your spinal column, which makes you a vertebrate. Now, can you give me some examples of invertebrates? What do you think? What's the animal that doesn't have a backbone? Alligator. Oh, you think an alligator doesn't have a backbone? Well, they're super big and strong. They definitely do have backbones. What's another one? What did you say earlier you thought was an animal? Snake. You think snakes? Well, snakes actually are made up of tons of bones, and we're going to talk about that too. What's another one? Under the dog, because I see a dog. No, animals that don't have a backbone. Dogs have bones. A dog? I would have thought a snake, but. Dog. Oh, I know. examples of animals that are invertebrates. You guys had all really, really great guesses. Um, I kind of figured you might say a snake because I actually hear that one a lot when I talk about vertebrates versus invertebrates or do invertebrate programs. And we're going to talk about why snakes are actually vertebrates. All right. So the first thing we're going to talk about are animals that have exoskeletons. And when I say an exoskeleton, I mean a hard outer cover, an outer shell, body armor on their body. Some of those are um, shiny, some are very smooth, some are hairy. There's all different types of exoskeletons that invertebrates can possess, which means that um, like this really, really large. Now you see, I have a pretty large head <laughs> and this right here is a very big bird eating spider. Now, surprisingly enough, this is actually just a baby. So here's my hand for comparison. And here is the baby spider. Now this bird eating spider, thankfully does not come from the United States. So we don't have to worry about walking outside and walking into a web or touching any type of, um, of uh, silk that they, might, that they might make, thankfully. Um, but these bird eating spiders are actually going to eat birds. They will capture birds and eat them. But this bird eating spider is an invertebrate because let's get a little closer. Just look at little spiders. Their bodies are covered in hair. Now they have lots of legs that they actually use to be able to, you know, walk, reach up, grab things. Um, uh, they have like little hooks on their feet that they use to actually latch on to surfaces, which allows for them to be able to climb up different surfaces and textures. Um, but spiders are invertebrates because they have that word that I used earlier, an exoskeleton, which means that their body armor is there on the outside of their body to protect them. Now I mentioned hairs and tarantulas and spiders are what we call arachnids and they are, which is an invertebrate. And it's just a really fancy way that scientists describe um, spiders different types of spiders and tarantulas. Now the hair on their bodies, just to give you some cool information about them, the hair on their body is actually what they use to coat themselves. And if they have a predator that tries to mess with them, they can actually take their feet and they can rub them or rub their legs together and they'll rub it on their body to loosen some of those hairs. And then when the predator tries to either bite, uh, bite down on them or bend down and sniff them to figure out what they are, then those hairs will then 
be taken into their nostrils, into their throat, or into their lungs, and it'll hurt every time the predator breathes. And even just touching them and having the hair stuck in your skin can hurt as well. Um, they're very itchy and very irritating. So that's why these animals can live for so long out in the wild is because they have a defense mechanism on their exoskeleton. Now we said it's an invertebrate because it's body armor, kind of like Captain America has that shield that he uses as body armor. Um, that body armor is on the outside. Whereas like we said, as humans, we have bones on the inside of our body. If we didn't have bones on the inside of our body, especially a backbone, we would kind of be like a blob, kind of like a squid or an octopus or something like that. The next invertebrate we're gonna talk about today is a really, really awesome starfish. Now, as you can see, I have um, most of the animals I'm gonna be using today are actually animals that have passed away for various reasons and they've been given to us so that we can educate young people just like you and we can talk about them because if we didn't have these specimens or these animals in the jars or in the shadow boxes, we wouldn't be able to, to bring them to you to show you examples. So I have a starfish here and we all know what starfish look like. They're very neat. They're in the shape of a star and starfish are what we call echinoderms, which is a really, uh, really fancy way of classifying starfish. Now we know that starfish, again, do look like stars. They're also known as sea stars. They don't have bones in their body like we do or like doggies or those chickens that we talked about. Um, they're lacking the backbone, which makes them an invertebrate. And their protection is actually on the outside of their body. And that's why if you ever have held uh, a, a sea star or a, a starfish, you'll notice that it's got it's very bumpy, but it's very, um, it feels like it's hard on the top, but when it dries out, it's very brittle. And this, my friends, is a starfish. Again, an invertebrate that you can find in the ocean. And your teacher had, um, whenever I asked you about invertebrates, Ms. Stein had asked you about um, animals in the ocean. And so she brought up a really great point because a lot of the specimens that I'm gonna show you are animals that can be found in the ocean. Now, are all invertebrates found in the ocean? They're not, are they? Um, many invertebrates live on land. Many of them fly around us. And when I say fly around us, I'm talking about butterflies and moths and different types of insects. So now we're gonna move into a couple of different insects that I thought were really cool. So whenever we were talking about what invertebrates can possibly look like or feel like, um, I did mention that some are shiny, some are smooth, but many of them do have some type of harder exoskeleton because without having that body armor like we talked about to protect them and keep them really strong they're not going to be able to survive in the wild whether it's in the ocean or it's in the woods or it's flying around wherever they live um, so having the exoskeleton is going to protect them and allow for them to live a little bit longer sometimes it makes them very hard and crunchy and you know i don't know about you but i don't really want to eat a crunchy burger I want my, my burger to be pretty soft. And so sometimes having the exoskeleton can actually detract or keep predators from wanting to eat those animals. Now, right, what I have here is some, these are some specimens in another shadow box. These are, oh, my scorpion fell, oopsie. Um, these are all different types of insects. Now, these are really large compared to some of the insects that we have here in Georgia. And like I said, some are shiny and they have a really iridescence to them, just like this beetle up here. And there's another one in here. The giant scorpion fell on it. And I'm actually going to talk about why that scorpion fell apart in just a moment. And here's another. This is another beetle that I thought was really neat that I wanted to to eat it. So looking at the scorpion, um, you know, it's supposed to be laying this way, parallel in the, or I'm sorry, horizontally here in the um, container. And the reason why it's not is because um, the exoskeleton has dried out and it's fallen apart. So 
won't have these exoskeletons on them, right? It allows for these animals and insects to come out. Um, the other one is having its bones inside the body. Now, the scorpion is another great example of um, animals that are invertebrates and have exoskeletons. Now, like I had talked about before, are all invertebrates going to have an exoskeleton? No. Um, we just happen to talk about some insects that have these exoskeletons. And again, having that outer body armor is going to help them survive. All right, so now we're going to move on. And this is a spider crab. And the spider crab is really neat to me because it's like a spider and a crab produced offspring. It's kind of hard to see because of that label there. I apologize. But a spider crab also has an exoskeleton, which means it's an invertebrate. And this one does live in the water. And the reason why it's called a spider crab is because it looks so much like a spider. Very similar to the actual body of this giant bird-eating spider. It has multiple legs to allow for it to be able to walk, for it to be able to defend itself and also be able to get its prey. The next one we're gonna be looking at, this is a crayfish. Now crayfish uh, are very common here where we live. Crayfish are prey items. So that means that they're going to be the food for other animals, even for something like a water snake, a cotton mouth, or other animals that might live around vernal pools or streams that don't necessarily hold water year round. Um, they can also be found in uh, different types of aquatic environments as well. And again, this is where animals that go to those aquatic environments or live in them or around them are going to be able to eat crayfish because crayfish actually have a lot of protein on the inside once you uh, get past the harder exoskeleton, that outer shell that they have. So this is one of the places you eat crayfish. And this is, this is really amazing because they kind of look like a lobster, like a very small lobster. They're lighter in color. And being light in color actually allows for them to be able to, um, to blend in, especially if the water is coming towards the, um, the sun is coming towards the top of the water. When the sun shines on it, it makes it more difficult for predators to be able to find the crayfish. So it's really neat. And again, they have multiple legs, just like the spider crab that we saw, just like the starfish and the giant bird eating spider and some of the other insects. Now, that doesn't mean that all invertebrates have tons of legs. Um, again, being an invertebrate just means that those animals are lacking that backbone that is inside of their body under the skin and they have a different type of body armor or protection. Now, some of these animals, like the one I'm gonna show you here in just a minute, actually doesn't have any type of exoskeleton um, as far as like a hard, outer shell or outer protection. Um, we mentioned that squid and octopi and things like that, they all have just very squishy kind of blubbery bodies. Now, does that mean that they just kind of lay there and they don't really do much? No, it just means that they're able to protect themselves in other ways, whether they cover their body in a mucus or they are able to um, electrify other animals. So they have other ways of defending themselves uh, which will allow for them to be able to survive longer in the wild. Now, this other one that we're going to look at, this one is a what we call a cephalopod, which means it's got a really big brain, which means that it's pretty smart. So if you give me just a minute, I'm going to show you this animal. And I'm really excited for you to be able to see this one because this was actually... Um, one that I had not seen up close, like this close before until I saw this. And then I was able to go to an aquarium and look at it up close. Now this one is a squid. And again, it has a really big head. Now up in there, it also has uh, little ink 
that it uses that it will actually surround its body. Now I was talking about um, these exoskeletons that we looked at, like the, the insects that have um, exoskeletons, they use that body armor. Well, because a squid is very smushy and mushy whenever you touch it, it's very soft to the touch, um, they actually will release a, an ink and it's a color that comes out and it actually, it'll deter predators from being able to find them or see them. And if you're a predator and you go up to a squid and you're like, I'm gonna eat you, I'm gonna eat you. And then it releases this ink. Are you actually gonna wanna eat it? No, because I wouldn't either. I would say, ew, I'll just go find some food elsewhere. So squids, again, they have a form of protection, also known as a defense mechanism that they use to protect themselves because they are squishy to the touch. Now a squid is an invertebrate because their body is a very different kind of shape. But again, you see what they have in common? They have multiple legs, just like all the others that we looked at today. Now I know that some of you, whenever I asked you about invertebrates to name some examples, you had named a snake. Well, I'm gonna show you why snakes are not invertebrates. You know snakes. Long, um, they are made up of hundreds of small legs. Their skulls, they have gills in here. So this is my friend Mimic, and he has what we call a corn snake. So he's a type of rat snake. And as you can see, he could hold himself up really well, and that's because he's covered in muscles. Under those scales and under that skin, he's made up of lots of muscles. He's also made up of those hundreds of bones that I mentioned, which makes him a vertebrate. Now we said the difference between a vertebrate and an invertebrate is that vertebrates have backbones and invertebrates do not. They are lacking that backbone. And so I'd mentioned before that a lot of the times when I ask um, students or some of my guests to give me examples of invertebrates, they always say a snake. But again, my friend Mimic here is made up of lots of bones, which allows for him to keep a really nice form, a nice structure, and also helps him move very rapidly through the Georgia woods. He's really curious about you. He's sticking his tongue out. He's saying, hi. And he's trying to smell you by using his tongue. So snakes are vertebrates. And another one, another example of an animal that is a vertebrate, just so we could give some examples of both invertebrates and vertebrates, are turtles and tortoises. Now, a lot of people think because they have shells on their backs and shells on their tummies that they are invertebrates, but turtles, just like humans, have backbones. And just like snakes, they have backbones. And they are made up of hundreds of bones on the inside, just like us and the snake. Here to show an example of why turtles actually do have backbones. This is one of my favorites to use as an example because you can actually see on the inside of the carapace, which is the shell that's on their back, you can see that backbone on the inside, which is known as a spinal column, which is what you and I have. So that's very neat. So turtles and tortoises are vertebrates. And since we're talking about vertebrates, I might as well bring out one of my. This is my friend, Hawkeye. Hawkeye is a very pretty Eastern box turtle. And just like on our example, of a turtle over there that I showed you just a few moments ago. Um, you can see that Hawkeye here has arms and legs and has a 
a shell that's right here on its back, which is called the carapace, and a shell on the tummy that's called a plasteron. Now, all that means is that if you look right here on Hawkeye, there's actually a line that goes down his back, and that is his backbone. So a couple of the examples that we talked about today, I'm going to show you those again. We talked about the difference between invertebrates and vertebrates, focusing on vertebrates today. So we said that an invertebrate is lacking a backbone, a vertebrate has a backbone, and what were some of those examples that we use today for invertebrates? Does anybody remember? Uh, an animal that didn't have a backbone. Which one? Bugs. The bugs. The ah. bugs. Those really pretty insects in the case here. And a wasp. A wasp. A, a towel. A wasp was a good example. What's another one? A towel. A Oh, yeah, an octopus. A shark. An octopus. Squid. The squid. Let's find our squid here because this one was so cool to me. Whoa, look at that. Got a really, really, really big head. Ah, that's funny. And then we also talked about the coastal plain crayfish that we have here. And I apologize for the glare on these jars. Let's see if I can kind of, nope, I'm not going to be able to cover that one. And then we also mentioned the really pretty starfish. I remember that one. You remember that one? And then we also had the spider crab. Ah! I thought the spider crab was super neat looking because it's a crab that looks like a spider. That's so cool. And we said that invertebrates can have exoskeletons. Do they always have an exoskeleton? No. No. And then just for reference, we talked about some animals that are vertebrates. And what were those examples that we, that we used? Some examples of animals that do have backbones. Oh, yeah, alligators. Yeah, alligators, yes, they do have backbones. What are some other ones? What she bring on the screen? A shark. That we thought didn't have a backbone. A shark? Y'all must think I'm wild. A snake. Yeah. A snake, because remember we said they're made up of hundreds of bones. But the animals that we looked at before that, like the crab, is it made up of hundreds of bones? No, it's just filled with ooey gooey goodness on the inside. And then we also mentioned the box turtle. We said box turtles are vertebrates because they have a backbone. Now, even though our lesson today was about invertebrates, I thought it would be fun just to show you a couple of, um, a couple of the animals that we have in our collection here at Chiha that do have backbones, just so you have an idea of which animals do and which animals do not have backbones. So great job. Now I'm actually ready to answer some questions you might have. We don't have any questions. You don't have any questions. I guess I did a really great job then. Yes, yes. Yes. You sure you don't have any? No. I, I, I don't have any. Well, what was, what was your favorite animal that you saw today? Whether it was the one in the case or a live animal? Um, um, a live animal that was moving. The snake the snake was cool, right? Yeah. But yeah. Hey, if you want to talk, raise your hand. I'll point to you. You can't hear everybody at the same time. Yeah, what was your favorite animal? The snake, too? That's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll have to remember to bring more snakes to my programs for your class. Oh, you should. <laughs> yeah, bring some more snacks. Bring some more. Okay. I guess it's been decided. I'll make sure to bring a bigger one next time. So well, do we have any other questions? Nope. And I may no. No. <laughs> okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for letting me bring some of my animals and some of my specimens and talk to you today about animals that are invertebrates 
and also show you a couple of my vertebrate friends. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again in the near future. And I hope you'll have a wonderful afternoon. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.